Paul Keating. The left idolise him, the right demonise him. He is a strange and compelling figure in our political debate. In my mind, he was a nation-shaping treasurer and then much less impressive as Prime Minister. But, wow, post-politics, he seems to have fallen into Beijing's orbit, seeing the world largely through the prism of a rising China with a deep suspicion and scepticism, if not antipathy, towards the United States. And now he is urging his own party in government to abandon the AUKUS agreement that will allow Australia to share and use nuclear submarine and other technology from the US and UK. And Keating has even bagged the quadrilateral dialogue, which sees four great democracies, the US, Japan, India and Australia, stand up to communist China in East Asia. Is it beyond the wit of, uh, of, of, of let's say, the United States to come to a multipolar mm. solution. Mm. But this idea that, you know, the United States is the exceptional power, you know, um, it's the proselytizer of democracy, you know, it's got God's ear, uh, and that the rest have got to, you know, follow along, uh, that was fine in the 20th century. The 20th century was a century of the United States. The 21st century is not the century of the United States. It's pretty clear who he thinks the 21st century belongs to, and that's the worry. Keating has previously suggested we should stand by if China takes Taiwan by force, and now he argues AUKUS cedes our sovereignty to the United States. We're able to do, we're able to do these things. We're able to build our submarines. I mean, I, uh, Kim Beasley and I were the moving force behind the Collins-class submarines. Mm. Uh, so the, the key is, if you own a, James, if you own a continent, you keep other people's foot from it. Mm. In other words, you want sea denial capability. And we could do our own sea denial capability, run an intelligent foreign policy without being owned by the United States mm. or anyone else. Mm. It's not intelligent to be owned. Yeah, Australian-made nuclear submarines armed with Australian nuclear weapons. I'd sign up for that, but it will never happen. We simply don't have the technology. AUKUS is our only way to get that technology. Our defence and security rests in our alliance partnerships. And let's hope Anthony Albanese and the rest of the new Labor government have stopped listening to their former leader. Let me bring in Michael Shoebridge from Strategic Insights Australia. He joins us from Canberra. Good to talk to you, Michael. Do you think Labor will listen to Paul Keating's urgings over AUKUS and the Quad? No, Chris, I don't. I think the modern Labor Party is treating Mr Keating like that um, mad uncle at the barbecue. You know, as long as he stays down the backyard and mutters to himself, everything's fine. So I expect Mr Albanese to just say what he said with the, la with the previous Keating outburst when he criticised AUKUS, which is to say... He always listens to Mr Keating, but Australia needs to stand up for our values and interests, and China has changed. That's as polite a dismissal as you can get, but it's a pretty clear one. Yeah, Anthony Albanese and Penny Wong have been strong on these issues. They've been good on foreign policy so far in government. There's been no wavering. There will be some socialist left members of the Labor Party, you would think, who would agree with Paul Keating. Certainly there'll be plenty in the Greens who agree with him. And obviously, these remarks will be very well received in Beijing. Yes. Well, it's pretty unfortunate to have a former Prime Minister uh, who other countries and uh, people living in other parts of the world, like China, will think carries a lot of weight in the Australian debate, say the kinds of things that Mr Keating does. Uh, part of it, I think, is he's trapped in the time when he was in power. So remember, uh, the 80s and mid-90s were a time when we didn't have major strategic concerns ourselves and when we were at the beginning of that uh, gravy train of the economic relationship with China that's ended so nastily now. So he's partly frozen in time and he's also spent a lot of time um, listening to and speaking with senior Chinese party members and officials through that advisory board role he had with the China Development Bank. So a lot of what we hear from him now seems to echo the Chinese communist narrative that we hear from Xi. 
Yeah, it's disappointing and it tends to legitimise uh, in the public debate a lot of their crazy comments directed at Australia as well. Let's switch uh, to the uh, other side of the globe and, and get your latest thoughts on Ukraine with these threats of the use of tactical nuclear weapons and Joe Biden's response. Where are we headed to there? Well, I think we've got escalation happening because Putin is running out of options. His energy blackmail of Western Europe hasn't worked. His military campaign keeps failing and the Ukrainians keep succeeding and causing mass, mass civilian deaths and thinking the Ukrainians are so, somehow going to have anything but more resolve to continue the war is clearly a mistake. So the message Putin needs to get is nuclear weapons are nuclear weapons. There are no tactical nuclear weapons. And I think Biden is right to talk publicly about the prospects of Putin using the weapons. Is there anything that can be offered to Putin for him to save face and back down? Or is the only solution here to push him back beyond Ukraine's original borders? Well, I think we've got to remember the Ukrainians get a vote here. They're the ones that are fighting the war. Um, some of the analysis now talks about it like it's Biden and Putin engaged in a conflict. Well, the Ukrainians are the ones doing all the fighting. I can't see them wanting to give up their country and the large chunks of it that Putin still controls. Um, I think they're going to keep fighting. Uh, eventually, Putin is going to lose the military capacity to wage war. So what he needs is a message around nuclear weapons to say, you've been wrong about the consequence of every move you've taken so far in this war. You're likely to be wrong if you think nuclear weapons are going to help you. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Thanks, Chris.